writers and their works have vividly portrayed the picture of Indian society. The writings too have changed with the changing face of India over the ages. Certainly they have also played a progressive role in bringing about reforms in the country. Hello, this is Rajat Kapoor. Welcome to Lounge, where we are talking about the changing face of Indian fiction. Our first guest today is Anil Dharkar. Hi, I'm Anil Dharkar. I'm a full-time columnist and I suppose I'd call myself a part-time writer. Uh, my books so far have dealt with the reality of India in different ways and different aspects of India. The latest is Icons, which portrays 20 men and women who have influenced modern India. Now through these essays on these different people, I think you get a composite picture of what today's India is. And I think we're getting a very confident look at India. We're getting a, a, a look which is coming from a, a, a young lot of people who know and are sure about themselves, they're sure about their country. And through that I think we are getting a picture of India in all its variety and its all its splendor. Hi Anil. Hi. Welcome to Lounge. Thank you. So you have been uh, writing a column for how many years? You've been an editor, you've been many things. Well, I think uh, definitely last century. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> But probably about a hundred years. No, but it's it's a long time. Yeah. yeah. And and you have been in touch with the writers over the years? I have been, of course. I've been in touch with the writers. I've been in touch with the writing. Mm -hmm. um, what one finds today is this huge explosion, you know. And you find that young men and women today are so confident, you know. I'm talking of a collective confidence of a nation. And that, I think is a process which is mysterious and it happens. So the confidence of the young people now has something to and do with that? And that's reflected in the fact that you can write. And you can write and get published, you know. Um, and I think a lot of, I think the debt of gratitude is owed to uh, Salman Rushdie. Um, because before that we had, I think writers were kind of venerable figures, you know. Okay like R.K. Narayan and people like that, and Mulkraj Anand. And even before that time, they were grand old men. Mm. But suddenly you get, you get someone like Salman Rushdie who... Who was a brat. Who comes and explodes. And he, he's not an Indian writer. He's an international writer with his first book. Mm. You know, he explodes on the international scene. He's using English language like it's not been used before. He goes into imaginary territories. He doesn't go like R.K. Narayan into a little make-believe village, you know. Right. He's creating a different world. He's, he's taking India, he's taking Bombay, and he's doing things with it, which the whole world of literature can relate to. Mm -hmm. So, I think it was fantastic. And how did he influence the... the no, because the, the way Midnight's Children was received all over the world, it won the Booker, it later won the Booker of Bookers. Uh, it suddenly put Indian writing in English in a different league altogether. Okay. You know, people reg started regarding it not as a kind of cottage industry, but as something which had to be studied, had to be written about, to be respected. What is the change in the writing? Uh, how do they look at the country differently, uh, if, if that is one of the changes? I think they reflect the vitality of the country. Uh, they ref with I'm sorry to keep using this word with a huge confidence, you know. They also do it with a lot of imagination. They do it with uh, writing skills. Many of them use the language as uh, Indians didn't do earlier. What I like is that there is publishing on a bigger scale. There is more possibilities for all writers. Uh, and I think the young now see that as a possible career option. 